Hey guys, so today's video is going to be about books, it's going to be about literature and the video has been suggested or requested by a lovely person on Patreon so in case you don't know, what's that? <laughs> okay, in case you don't know, I have a Patreon because YouTube is not really paying for the hard work that I put in my videos but yeah, I have a Patreon and if you donate, if you donate or like if you want to support my channel with one dollar um, a month you have access to at least two videos that are exclusive to Patreon and if you like donating three dollars a month you can suggest or request topics and I choose them, pick them and make videos with those topics. Link is gonna be down below and I would really appreciate if you can spare one dollar or three dollars a month it would greatly help. And it's a really interesting video that I'm really excited to do and I'm also really excited to check out all of the other videos because I haven't really watch them. It's basically the reading your country tag where you answer questions about the literature of your country. So the first question is where are you? Um, maybe you might have guessed by my accent. Or, I mean if you know me, <laughs> you, you know, but like if you're new. Uh, I am in France, Paris. So the second question is what is your favorite childhood book from your country? if you don't have a favorite name, a popular children's book from your country. So quite frankly, I had to think a lot uh, for this question and I couldn't come up with an answer because I did not really read children's book when I was younger. I remember that we would go to a library with my family and very soon I started reading classics. I remember that I read Dostoevsky when I was like maybe 13, which obviously, I mean, is not ideal in the sense that I did not understand the complexity and the beauty of the book but I think it was really nice because it made me feel so much more familiar and not intimidated by classics so I haven't read many children's books so to speak but um, and also the ones I have read were like the Goosebumps when I was really younger and they're not from France so the one book that I have picked and I think it's not gonna be a surprise um, I'm gonna choose Le Petit Prince or The Little Prince uh, by Saint-Exupéry because I feel like it's such a famous book. Truth is, I have never read it. I was supposed to read it when I was in primary school, um, but it's like one or one of the two books that I haven't read, I mean that I was assigned to read at school and I haven't read um, because I just didn't like it very much. Third question. What is the book from your country that you read in school, primary school or high school? Your choice. So for this, I picked up two books. I'm sorry, I cheated a little bit. I'm gonna have a few answers maybe sometimes. But yeah, I picked up two books that I read when I was in high school because I just love them so much and I wanted to talk about them. So the first one is Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. So if you are familiar with my channel, you know, you know. You know, I love Flaubert so freaking much. He's my favorite author, possibly my favorite French author, I would say. Um, my favorite book by him, or my favorite book of all time, is L'Education Sentimentale, or The Sentimental Education, but I didn't read it in school. The one I read in school was Madame Bovary. I think it's a huge classic. There were several film adaptations. Um, the most recent one with Ezra Miller is quite good, I have to say, but it does not compare to the book. Flaubert is really nice because he, write, he writes amazingly well, he has this irony, he has this very, like, uh, he has this very, he has this very impressive capacity to make you feel things, but not in like a cliche or like, sort of a cheesy way. It really isn't cheesy but it's very strong and very powerful. Also what I find really interesting in Flaubert is this constant layering of opinions, angles, perspectives which make it a very interesting experience reading wise. The story is pretty well known. It is the story of a young woman called Emma and she's married to a doctor in the countryside but she dreams of bigger things partly because of literature and that's her life story which is quite tragic but if you haven't read it I would highly suggest it. Um, the second book I want to talk about that I had to read in high school as well is Les Fleurs du Mal by Baudelaire. So this is poetry. Obviously we didn't have to read it in this edition but I love this edition because it is beautiful and you have illustration and paintings that go so well with the poetry. So Baudelaire is quite well known. I don't think he's as known as Rimbaud outside of France which I think is a big shame because Baudelaire in my opinion is much better <laughs> than Rimbaud. Um, he writes poetry about beauty, death, bizarre, 
um, contradictions in the human psyche and human life. His poetry is beautiful, magnificent, impressive and very dark and witty at the same time. I honestly would recommend it to anyone. Even if you don't like poetry, I think you would like it. Fourth, what is a book set in your favorite area of your country and or what's a book set in a place that you like to visit in your country? So quite frankly, um, there's no place I really want to visit in France, so I'm not going to answer the second half of the question. For the first half, I don't have physical copies of the book, but I'm going to choose any book by Marcel Pagnol because basically my favorite part of France is not really Paris. I mean, I love Paris, but I love the southeast of France where I am originally from. It is such a beautiful area of France with such a specific and beautiful and enchanting atmosphere and it all it's also very nostalgic for me as well obviously and Pagnol has a very specific kind of writing and I think he's not well known outside of France so if you're interested in something that's a bit more like I don't know like French but very different from the grey cold elegant sort of Paris French and if you want something that's more like rural and warm and friendly and nature oriented I feel like this is something you would absolutely love. So what is a historical fiction book set in your country? So this one is not going to be a surprise I also don't have a physical copy of it because I read it when I was really young and I need to reread it I am going to choose Les Miserables by Victor Hugo or any book by Victor Hugo which is historical. Victor Hugo is an amazing person. He was a politician, he was a writer, he was a wonderful man altogether, I would say. He has written poetry which is beautiful, he has written long and epic uh, novels which are historical. Obviously Les Miserables is very famous. You also have uh, Notre Dame de Paris which is very well known to um, also because of the Disney movie, uh, but Les Miserables is beautiful. I mean, it's not necessarily my favorite, like I don't necessarily... I like characters which are a bit more normal because one thing about Victor Hugo is a very... He has a very like almost... What would I say? It's almost like a tragedy, you know, when you have those characters which are so... They're almost heroes, basically, and I prefer characters which are normal everyday life sort of people. Not necessarily normal everyday life people, but like more like miserable people with a great like interior life, I suppose, but he's not really into that. Uh, but it's a beautiful book. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful saga, I would say. And such a classic that everyone should read. And Victor Hugo, even if it's not for that one book, deserves so much recognition and so much respect that I really had to mention his name in this video. Um, the question six is not relevant for my country, so I'm going to skip it. The question seven, what is a classic book from your country? So I had to think because I feel like France has so many classics. I actually think France is like the number one country when it comes to... Nobel Prizes in Literature, which is which is nice, but um, uh, yeah, I feel like France has so many classics and I read mostly classics, so it was kind of difficult, but I chose this one, Zola. So I chose Les Sommois, but really it could be any book by Zola. Zola is one of my favorite author as well. He's an author from the 19th century. He writes about things that are very real, very sad, very like raw. And uh, I mean, it's not all of his work. When you look at like the ending of his life, he has some books which are a bit more like, what would I say, light and lyrical and almost poetic in the way they're written and with subjects and emotions and feelings which are a bit more positive. But I feel like he's most famous for works which are very raw, very sad, very realistic. Um, I have a few favorites. I really like Nana and I really like La Curie. All books are going to be translated, the title, somewhere, probably in the bo in the description box below. Um, but yeah, La Sommoir and Germinal, Germinal are, pro are probably uh, some of his most well-known works. Uh, eight, what is the book from your country that you haven't read but you would like to read? So... For this one, honestly, I don't really know. Okay, so there is actually one, but I don't think it's going to be for this year because it's such a big book. I really want to read Mémoire d'Outre-Tombe by Chateaubriand or maybe Le Génie du Christianisme, one of these two. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say. But I'm more focused on like reading outside of France at the moment. 
And last but not least, what are some of your favorite authors or books from your country? So we'll go with that. Okay, so the first one I really have to talk about, and a lot of French person, especially if they know literature, might disagree with me, but André Breton. <sighs> André Breton. What could I say about André Breton? Um, but that he was a very despicable man, apparently. Okay, André Breton is the leader of surrealism in France. I mean, he's probably the leader of surrealism, period, because uh, it originated from France. But um, yeah, surrealism is a movement that I am particularly interested in. I think it's so refreshing, creative, innovating, stimulating, and beautiful, and just eye-opening. Um, so I love anything that's surrealist. But I genuinely really enjoy Breton's work. I think it's amazing. He's well known for a sort of novella. It's not a novella, but let's say just a, just a book, which is called Nadja. And I actually have a tattoo for this book. But I also love his poetry. And Claire de Terre is a collection of poetry that I very, very much enjoy. You can probably tell it's beautiful. If you are someone who likes literature and if you're someone who writes, it is so inspiring, like you read that and you just want to create. And I think there is nothing more powerful than that. Sticking to poetry, I actually like poetry very much apparently. Okay, sticking to poetry, I could not not mention Apollinaire um, and his collection of poetry, which is called Alcohol. He has written very different kinds of works and I think it's that's why he's a very interesting person. Um, but alcohol is such a brilliant, beautiful, so delicate and detailed collection of poetry. Like, it's so beautiful. Honestly, it is just beautiful. When you read it, the sounds are beautiful, the way it's written is beautiful, the absence of like punctuation and like, you know, commas and periods and stuff, it's beautiful as well. The references, the intertextuality is amazing. Um, the atmosphere, the themes, it is beautiful and it is, um, I mean, surrealism is called surrealism thanks to Apollinaire. He is the first one who used this word and the surrealists decided to name their movement after him. I mean, after him, after whatever, you understand me. Uh, so alcohol is a must, absolute must read, really. We'll stop with poetry after this one. I chose Poetries, any kind, by Mallarmé. You can definitely, I mean, if you know literature, you might see a theme here. Um, it is a very difficult poetry, I'd say. It's like very... Mm, it's kind of difficult to understand where it's getting at. It's kind of difficult to understand the main ideas. It's a lot of, you know, little roads and side roads. I guess if you don't like poetry and if you don't like classics and if you don't like things that are not contemporary, you're not gonna like this. But if you like poetry, which is very, like the idea you have of poetry, the things you read, you don't understand them, but it's so beautiful and you have all those difficult words, you're gonna like it. I'm really bad at describing this because I feel like it's so difficult to describe even in French. Just give it a try. Okay, we're gonna end up the video because it's getting quite long with three novels. The first one is André Malraux, La Condition Humaine. I feel like André Malraux does not get enough recognition. I love his work. I think it's so beautiful, so interesting. The values behind his works are amazing. His book is about um, communism in Vietnam, um, obviously with the French and everything. And it might be a bit boring if you don't like things that have to do with history and politics, but if you do, that's amazing. And that's not the only thing that he has written. He also has some other kind of works which are a bit more bizarre, a bit more like surprising and like unsettling. So Malraux is a very interesting person if you don't know him, so I would highly suggest researching him. Flaubert, once again, I'm sorry, but I had to talk about Salambo, which is a wonderful and very unique piece of art. When you think, 
it's a piece of art before even being a book in my opinion it's a book about beauty everything in this book is about beauty the themes are beautiful the characters are beautiful the style is beautiful the words it chooses are beautiful everything is aimed at being beautiful in this book in my opinion that's how i received it at least but it's never boring it's never plain it's never empty it's amazing it's a wonderful exercise of style and writing and just creation I admire Flaubert so freaking much. Like if you read Salambo and then if you read Madame Bovary and then if you read Le Dictionnaire des Idées Reçues, for example, you will understand the complexity and the intelligence of the man. So yeah, highly suggest. And last but not least, I have talked about this as well in other in some of my other videos. Aurélien by Aragon, one of my absolute favorite books and I feel like I need to make a video about this book. But you know, when you love a book so much, it's so hard to make a video about it. This is the story of two people, a man and a woman, Aurélien and Berenice, who meet in Paris uh, just before the Second World, just before and during the Second and after, I mean, the Second World War, that's the time span. And they meet, they kind of fall in love, but not really, you don't really know. That's the whole point, I feel like. I mean, it's not the whole point, but like missing, just being so close to something and missing it that's the i feel like that's what the book is really about and it is portrayed in relationships love relationships in career in succeeding in your life in peace and politics and in everything it's an amazing book it is beautiful sometimes it resonates so close to home like it echoes so much to home so close to your heart it's it's like you almost close the book and you're like, oh my god, that's just that's just so intense. I love this book so much. I really want to reread it when I have some more time. And maybe after I reread it, I will make a video about it. But quite frankly, anything by Aragon is amazing. He was also a surrealist, even though this is not really surrealist. I mean, you can see the influence, but surrealists didn't write novelas, especially novelas, novels, especially big ones like this. So he was a bit of a rebel even in the surrealist movement. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I mean, I said quite a lot of things and the video is 20 minutes long, so we'll stop with this. Honestly, I'm not tagging anyone. I mean, maybe I will, but I'll contact you personally. If you are from a country that's usually not talked about enough, and I mean, there are many, many countries like this, I would really love for you to make a video, even if you're not a YouTuber, I would watch it and just, you know, take notes because I, I really want to read diversely, um, especially if you're like from the Middle East or from Arabic countries. I really want to discover more of your literature, so that'd be amazing. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you discovered a few books and I hope this made you want to read more French literature. Honestly, it is amazing, so you should definitely do. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye!